Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum class. I welcome you to English grade 8 video lessons. This is your instructor Zia Hamid. I hope that you are doing well. My dear learners, we are talking about unit number 2, Greenhouse Effect and our world. This will be our lecture number 5. We will be exploring the competency of reading and critical thinking and we are discussing the topic of figurative and connotative meaning. Now, let's see and uh, understand what is our students learning outcome and how do we break it down. So our SLO, there are basically two SLOs, one is for the, uh, for your recalling, we have already gone through the main idea in previous videos. Now let's read it, <clears throat> analyze that text comprises a group of paragraphs that develop on the main idea addressed by the writer throughout the text. Next one is, determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text. Now we are talking about meaning, it includes figurative and connotative meanings, analyze the impact of rhymes and other repetitions of sounds, for example, on a specific verse or stanza of a poem or section of a story or drama. Now. We have already seen that the main idea is actually the central idea of any paragraph and it can be found through the topic sentence. Now we are going, we are also going to see that how we can identify different kind of meanings through our text. We can look at, uh, we will be looking at figurative and connotative meanings. Now, here is a vertical linkage of our SLO with the previous grade. I hope that you have uh, gone through that and you recall most of it. Now, time for a quick brainstorming session for you. What is, what does a contextual meaning mean? This is your question. What do you know about contextual meaning? Now, Let's talk about figurative meaning and contextual meaning. Connotative meaning. Now, let's try to understand and define meaning. Meaning is what a word, phrase, sentence or text is trying to tell us. It's the idea or concept that we understand when we read, hear or see something. For example, the meaning of the word cat is a small animal that purrs and has whisker. Now, we know that there are different kind of meanings. Let's talk about figurative meaning. Figurative meaning is when words or phrases are used in a way that is different from their normal literal meaning to make writing more interesting or to express something in a creative way. For example, he has a heart of gold. Now this is where a figurative language is being used. This means he is very kind and generous, not that his heart is made of gold. So when we are dealing with figurative language, you do not take words just as it is. You have to go through the context and the actual figurative meaning or figurative words or language that is being used. So this is about figurative meaning. His heart is made of gold. It doesn't mean that his heart is made of gold. It means that he's kind and generous. So figurative meaning, figurative language has a contextual, uh, a different meaning and you uh, read something and the meaning is something else. Now, let's talk about connotative meaning. So, connotative meaning is the extra feelings or ideas that a word brings to mind beyond its basic dictionary definition. Words can make us feel positive, negative or neutral emotions. For example, the word here, home, the basic meaning is a place where you live. But it can also make you feel warmth, safety and comfort. So, in connotative meaning, connotative words, they give us meaning of uh, 
a feeling or an emotion like the word home when you hear the word home it gives you a happy comfortable feeling now this is what the home this is what we call the quantitative meaning of the word home now let's read our lesson from page 16 of the book here we have a pre reading question excessive burning of fossil fuels is the major cause of climate change this causes problems like melting ice very hot days and stronger storms showing why it's crucial to ta to tackle this issue what are some recent examples of climate change supported by evidence from recent events now you will think about and ponder upon these pre-reading questions and let's get started with reading our lesson we have our char character subhan taha mr hassan the science teacher ali Dr. Ashwan, the climate scientist. Scene 1. In this scene, in a cozy drawing room, three students, Subhan, Ali and Taha, have been invited by their science teacher to meet Dr. Ashwan, a renowned climate scientist. The students and the teacher are waiting for Dr. Ashwan. They have started a discussion on climate change. Subhan, enthusiastically, did you hear about climate change and how it's affecting our world? Taha, absolutely, Subhan. I've been reading a lot. I've been reading about melting ice caps and these wild weather tantrums. For example, we experienced an intense heat wave last year, and this year in 2023, we are witnessing the rainy season. It's like nature is sounding an alarm. Ali, indeed, Taha, the changing weather is being experienced in other parts of the world as well. For example, the Arctic region has been experiencing significant warming which leads to the melting of glaciers and sea ice. This has significant effects on the ecosystem and indigenous communities that rely on the ice for their way of life. Likewise, Australia has been dealing with hotter, hotter heat waves and longer periods of wildfires because of climate change. The higher temperature, longer droughts and different weather patterns make it easier for wildfires to spread. The impacts of global warming and climate change have led to the accelerated melting of glaciers and erratic monsoon, monsoon patterns, becoming significant factors contributing to the recurring floods in Pakistan. These floods stem from intense monsoon rainfall and the rapid thawing of glaciers. Given Pakistan's geographical positioning, topography and monsoonal climate, it remains highly susceptible to frequent and severe flooding. The Indus River and its tributaries bear the burnt of overflow during the monsoon season, resulting in widespread in inundation across different regions of the country. These recurring floods wreak havoc on infrastructure, agriculture and human lives, making them the most prevalent nature disaster in Pakistan. The devastating, the devastating flood of 2010 and 2022 stand as stark reminders of the substantial losses inflicted upon the nation. Mr. Hassan says, it's, a great, it's great to see your interest in these important topics. Climate change happens for many reasons and one important factor is the greenhouse effect. Subhan, excuse me Mr. Hassan, could you please explain the greenhouse effect? I'm not quite familiar with it. Mr. Hassan says, oh, you're right on the mark with your curiosity, Subhan. Imagine it as nature's own thermostat, working behind the scenes to regulate Earth's temperature, yet this is the main cause of climate change. Taha, intrigued. But how does it work, Mr. Hassan? Ali, leaning in. Yeah, those greenhouse gases, what do they do in all of this? Mr. Hassan says, encouraging them. Your interest is motivating. Let's talk about it. The natural greenhouse effect is like Earth's cozy blanket of certain gases. These gases trap heat from the sun to keep our planet warm and comfortable for life. There was a knock on the door and Mr. Hassan goes to receive Ms. Dr. Asfan. They came to the drawing room. Mr. Hassan introduced Dr. Asfan to his students and three of them welcomed him. 
Mr. Hassan told him that they were discussing greenhouse gases and their effect on the environment. Subhan says, Dr. Aswan, we are eager to learn more from you. Dr. Aswan says, nodding, certainly, the greenhouse effect is like a dance of gases, carbon dioxide, methane and water vapors in our atmosphere. They form a kind of shield allowing sunlight to enter while keeping some of the heat like a gentle hug. Taha says making connections. So it's like a warm blanket for our planet. Ali, why is it called the greenhouse effect? Mr. Hassan says that is a great question. Ali, picture a greenhouse that help plants grow by keeping them warm. Similarly, these gases themselves work as Earth's warm keepers maintaining a balanced temperature. Subhan, but is it always a good thing? Dr. Aswan, an insightful question, Subhan. The natural greenhouse effect is essential. But when we release extra gases from burning fossil fuels and do not plant trees in sufficient amounts, it upsets the balance. This leads to global warming, changing our planet's climate. Taha. So, are we ourselves causing harm by adding these extra gases? Ali, and what does it mean for our future? Dr. Aswan says, both of you raised valid points. Human actions do play a role in climate change. This affects many things from rising sea levels to unpredictable weather to changing crop rotation, impacting nature and our way of life. Now, here is a world reading question for you. Why is the term greenhouse used to describe this natural phenomenon? You have to think about this, ponder upon this while you are reading the lesson. Now, Mr. Hassan says optimistic. However, we have the power of knowledge. Understanding the greenhouse empowers us to make positive changes. By reducing our carbon footprint, we can contribute to the fight against climate change. And now the scene, the discussion transitions into a deeper exploration of the greenhouse effect guided by Dr. Aswan and Mr. Hassan. Now, after reading this lesson with me, you have to answer this post-reading question. Why did you learn, what did you learn about the greenhouse effect? We have glossary for difficult words that you can go through. The meanings are given. Now, the purpose of reading this lesson is uh, for you to familiarize with main uh, you can identify the main idea and also you can see that how uh, you can uh, identify the main idea and other things now this is a simulation video for your better understanding we have a classroom activity for you from your page number 19 of the book choose the correct options now these are mcqs given uh, for your classroom activity here we have another question from page number 20. Let's read it. Read the text of the lesson again and highlight the sentences which give us the main idea of the lesson. Write them separately in your notebook. Now, we have read the lesson together. You have to identify the main ideas, the things, important ideas that are discussed in the lesson of the, in the text of the lesson. We have a worksheet for your practice and your better understanding. And now, let's talk about the homework from page 19. Read the text and answer the following questions. Now, these are some critical and reading and critical thinking questions. Here we are at the end with some resources attached for your understanding and your help. You can access them easily from the description of the video. My dear learners, we have worksheet, a presentation, a lesson plan, a question bank, and finally, a skill sheet. All these are available for your help. Thank you. I hope that you had great time learning about exploring main ideas of a text. Till the next video lesson, Allah Hafiz.